More than a dozen people are dead following a bus bombing in Syria. The attack took place in the capital city of Damascus. Two explosive devices detonated on board a military bus during rush hour Wednesday. At least 14 people were killed, several more injured. It is the deadliest bombing to hit the city since March of 2017. CBS News foreign correspondent Charlie Daggett joins us now for more on this. Hi, Charlie. What can you tell us about today's attacks, and do we know who's responsible for the bombing? Hi, Tanya. Well, the bombing targeted a bus carrying Syrian troops in the middle of uh, rush hour at a busy intersection. Now, a Syrian military official said two bombs were planted on the bus, and they actually found a third bomb, which thankfully they, were ma they managed to uh, defuse. Fourteen people were killed. Nobody has claimed responsibility, but of course, ISIS likely tops the list of suspects. Um, but in Syria, there are plenty of anti-government elements who could be responsible. Uh, as, as far as a response from the Syrian government, there has been no official word, uh, but a police commander called it a cowardly act. Um, we may still have the impression, I guess, that Syria is awash with violence, but as you said, uh, this is rare in the capital. There, there, there had been more frequent attacks until government forces were able to dislodge um, militants and terrorists from the city back in 2018. So, you know, as you mentioned, and we've been talking about, this is one of the deadliest attacks to hit the Syrian capital in years. So what does this tell us about the ongoing conflict in Syria? I mean, just because it hasn't been in the headlines recently, what's been happening there? Yeah, we haven't been paying attention to what's been going on in Syria for, for many reasons, partly because it hasn't actually been that bad. Now, there is still a, a civil war of sorts that is going on. There was a truce that was called in an area where there is still um, uh, an element of Islamic extremists who are still attacking the government. But more than that, there are certain parts of the country that are still held by non-government forces and non-government entities. Uh, but, but why we're paying attention to this is because there hasn't been an attack like this in Damascus, in the capital itself, for a couple of years. And the government responded. So th the fighting is still going on, especially in the, the northwest part of Syria, which is still not being controlled or managed or governed by the Syrian government. There's a huge chunk um, that is still being held, or not held necessarily, because it's in coordination with the Syrian government by um, the Kurdish, uh, ethnic Kurds, who are still in that region. So, you know, we haven't been paying too much attention to Syria, but it's not in the midst of a fighting civil war, but mm -hmm. this is not a unified nation. And so speaking of those opposition strongholds, those areas, there was a targeted shelling there in northwest Syria roughly an hour after the attack. Uh, you know, our understanding is at least 13 people were killed and more than two dozen others injured. Uh, what is the government saying about this bombing? Do you think it was some sort of response to the early morning attack in Damascus? Well, Tanya, it had to be mm. a response. It happened within an hour of the attack on the bus in Damascus. And, you know, shelling an area, especially in Idlib, which is where this took place, you know, these aren't smart bombs. These aren't drones. This isn't surgical military precision. They're not going after specific targets. They're essentially just shelling an area. And um, the U.N. has said that that shelling that you're seeing right there actually killed four children. Four children are among the casualties uh, in that uh, attack. So, you know, within an hour of the bus bombing, there was a shelling of this region in Idlib, which is the last holdout of Islamic extremists and government separatists. So, you know, the government hasn't said this is in retaliation, but I think it's pretty clear or awfully coincidental that right after this attack happened in Damascus, we see the shelling in Idlib. So this is ongoing, and this is what we really have to pay attention to, because I know that people talk about a truce that was sort of agreed, and I, you know, I know, did an eye roll there, because it, it, a truce is not necessarily a ceasefire. It's not a peace agreement. It's just a stopping of, of the uh, military action that's happening at the moment. But that doesn't necessarily mean that fighting doesn't continue, as we've seen in truces, especially in regions like Syria. There has been fighting. Government forces have been fighting uh, Islamist militants, ISIS among them, in this area in Idlib. It's one little patch 
of uh, Syria that they still haven't taken control of, and they haven't marched in because that would be a full battle, um, and, but they're not necessarily accepting the status quo there. Absolutely. Well, Charlie Daggett, thank you so much for getting us up to speed on Syria. We appreciate it. Thanks, Tanya.